I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. and I'm going to talk to you guys about my favorite memory growing up in Haiti. My favorite memory is that I got sent to all girls school and it was fun. Quite, quite fun. Um, it was really enjoyable. Um, it was fun to be with all those powerful people teaching us how to be confident about ourselves, be respectful to others, especially adults, be kind. Um, it was really great to experience this thing. It was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life, and I love it. It was peaceful, it was good. So I'm going to start off by one of the reasons that um, I would be proud to be of Haitian heritage is because I believe that Haitian people are very resilient, they're very strong people, they've gone through a lot of hardship, but at the end of the day they're able to make it out and able to do the best with what they have. Hello guys, Sak Pase. Did you know that? Haiti had three branches of government like the United States. Oh yeah, there are three branches of the government. The legislative, the executive, and the judicial. Haiti is a constitutional republic. My name is Clarissa Nose. I'm part of my Haitian heritage, my language, my culture, and my ancestry. Did you know that the Unknown Maroon is very important? The Unknown Maroon Monument represents Haiti's pioneer freedom fighters. It is in front of the National Palace in Port-au-Prince. My name is Jake De Wozes. I am proud of my Haitian heritage and culture. Good morning, everybody. My name is Miss Michelle, and I have um, Miss Richardson with me today. As you're aware, um, the month of May, it's um, Mental Health Awareness Month. So Ms. Richardson and I, we're going to briefly talk about mental health. So Thursday, May 19th, is Go Get Your Green On. So we would like all staff and students to wear their green to represent mental health matters. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. So what we're going to have in the cafeteria, we're going to have a little poster on the back end. We want you to write the students what you're grateful for. And also staff, I'll be walking around with a um, tree and I just need you to write what you're grateful for. And we want everybody to be part of it and join us on Thursday to celebrate the mental health um, awareness. Thank you, guys. Mental health is something we all have. It includes our thoughts and feelings about ourselves and others, how we relate to other people, how we function day to day, and how we cope with the ups and downs of life. Having good mental health is not about having no mental health problems. It's about feeling good enough about ourselves, being able to do the things that matter to us, and having the resilience to deal with the difficult situations we all experience in life. When talking about our mental health, it can be useful for us to think of it like a scale. Our mental health scale will move towards good or poor mental health, depending on what's going on in our lives and the supports we have around us. There are things that can challenge our mental health and shift the balance of our mental health scale. These challenges can come and go over time. They may be brief or may last for many years. They can leave us feeling stressed, sad, worried, lonely, overwhelmed. Mental health difficulties rarely just have one cause. They're often an understandable response to having to deal with the circumstances of our lives. 
and things that have happened to us in the past. While there are things that challenge our mental health, there are also things that can support it too. These things won't necessarily prevent challenges to our mental health, but they can help us cope with what life throws at us. They can help us achieve balance in our mental health scale. Mental health can be complex because our experience of it is personal and unique. But we know that the more we normalise conversations about our mental health, the easier it will be for young people and adults to seek the support they need when they need it. Everyone gets sad now and then. Do you? In some cases, you may know the cause. <laughs> In other cases, you may not. Even if there doesn't seem to be a cause, what can you do when sadness holds you in its grip? First, find someone to talk to about it, such as a parent or close friend. In the midst of his turmoil, Job, a faithful man in Bible times, said, I will speak out in my bitter distress. When someone knows what you're going through, he or she can lower the rope and pull you out of the pit. Here's another idea. Why not put your thoughts on paper? At Proverbs 3.21, the Bible tells us to safeguard practical wisdom and thinking ability. Writing about your feelings can help you do that. Once they're on paper, you can sort them out. And then the sadness can be less overpowering. A third suggestion. The Bible says that if you pray about your concerns, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and thoughts. So don't forget prayer. Last, but certainly not least, reading the Bible can help, especially the book of Psalms. Filling your mind with positive thoughts from the Bible can have a positive effect on your feelings. But what if your feelings just won't go away? What if you've lost interest in just about all activities that you used to find exciting? What if you seem to have no appetite, have trouble sleeping, and suffer from intense feelings of worthlessness? If symptoms persist, why not talk to your parents about getting a checkup? A physician can help determine if your sadness has a medical cause, such as clinical depression. If you do suffer from clinical depression, it is nothing to be ashamed of. With treatment, many sufferers have begun to feel better, perhaps even the best they have felt in a long time. So, whether your sadness is caused by depression or not, with assistance and effort, you can get out of the deep pit of sadness. Remember, feelings are temporary. They will pass. And if you can learn to deal with them now, you'll be prepared to handle them as an adult. By taking things a day at a time and relying on the support of your parents and trustworthy friends, you can go from sad to glad. <laughs>